are many different kinds of sewing machine needles and a whole load of different companies that make them. You've got your universal ones, you've got your top stitch ones, you've got metallic ones, you've got twin needle ones, you've got leather ones, you've got wing needles. Which one should you choose and why should you have a new needle? Well, the reason for changing your needle is if your threads are either broken or shredded, if you happen to have got skipped or uneven stitches, or if the fabric is puckered, or there's that funny popping sound made by the machine. That's when you need to change your needle. But let's look briefly at the needle itself. So here I have a quick photocopy of a needle. And if we look at the various parts, this is the top of the needle, which has a beveled end, which allows it to go into your sewing machine. Then you've got the size, which is impossible to read. But there are some companies that actually give you a colour-coded top to the needle, so you can have some chance of picking it out. Then you've got the shank. Now, regular sewing machine needles for domestic machines have a flat shank, and that goes to the back ordinarily. There are one or two machines where it does go to the side, but it will be displayed on either your throat plate or in your instruction manual. But 99 times out of 100, it is the flat bit to the back. Industrial machines and some overlockers and things have a rounded needle. Then you've got the shoulder, and this is where sometimes the colour code from certain manufacturers, perhaps like Schmetz, will appear. Down to the blade, and the needle size itself is determined by the width of this blade. For instance, if it's 0.75 of a um, centimetre across here, that's a 75 needle, and I'll come to needle sizes in a moment. Then you've got the groove. Now the groove cradles and guides the thread to the eye. And it's the length and the size of the groove that will vary according to the needle type. The eye, the all important eye that half of us can't see half the time. Uh, incidentally, as a top tip, if you're having difficulty threading the eye, don't forget to wet the needle eye first. Don't suck the thread, because if you suck the thread, it swells and won't go through the eye. And if you have difficulty threading it then, well, change your needle and go for a top stitch or a metallic one. Then there is obviously the point, and then there is the tip. Now, if you burr the tip, it's going to make that popping sound, and that's high time you actually change the needle. So what sort of needles to use? Well, most of the time I will use a universal needle. Um, I like using the universal needle and it just works for me for many of the things that I do. But if I'm going to use any metallic work, then I will use a metallic needle. And if I want to do top stitching, I'll use a top stitch needle. It's a needle size that is the thing you have to think about. Strangely enough, when it comes to needles, and I don't know why it's in that packet upside down, let's have another packet here. The size of the needle, the higher the number, the thicker the needle. So this happens to be an 80, it's actually a 12. You very often get the same sizes, you get two different numbers, but it's still, the rule applies, is the higher the number, the fatter the needle. So a 12 is fatter than an 11, and a 14 is fatter than a 12, etc, etc. If I'm going to do a lot of machine embroidery, I will use a, a really pound through very, very thick threads, that's free motion embroidery, I will put a fat needle on, something like 100 or maybe even 110. If I'm going to do some very fine machine quilting and I don't want to damage the fibres, that's when I will use something like a 60 or a 70. And indeed, Philippa Naylor uses in her work mainly 60 needles because she doesn't want to pierce great holes through all the work. So the fatter the needle, the bigger the hole it will make. When you have decided what sort of needle you're going to put in, remember to insert it into the machine properly. And the big problem with people putting needles into their machine is that if they don't get it up high enough, or if it's down too low, then the machine will behave erratically. So if you've just changed your needle and the machine's not behaving properly, well, just go back and take it out and put it back in again. You might have either pushed it up too much or left it not quite far enough sitting in its little space. Something you do need to be aware of is basically how to read and also to understand the difference between a ballpoint and a sharp and how you can work it out from the needle packet itself. Now here are a variety of needles. Let me just move the twin needles out of the way. When it comes to reading the packet of needles, you'll very often find that it'll say something like 130 705H. This 
whatever the measurement is here or whatever the figures are here is really just a copy of that for other countries. Now the H means it'll be a sharp. If it's got an S it'll be a ballpoint. Sharp needles are for working with cotton threads and what I have done is I have scanned in and put as a um, screen at the end of this little film a very useful chart telling you what sort of needle you should be using for what sort of fabric. As you won't be able to print it off, you can always take a picture of it with your phone. Then you've got a handy reference guide. So on the packet when you get it, it will say what sort of needle it is. These are universals and it says it again there. The size is written down the bottom. 80 is the same as a 12. Some people look at 80s and some people look at 12s. It just depends which number system you actually read. So you can tell from the packet now, as there were some twin needles on the screen a minute or two ago, twin needles you want to be a bit careful of. They are really useful. Now, that's one for a stretch fabric. And you notice it says S there. There's an S, 130 bleak 705 H. It's the S that tells you it's a stretch or a ballpoint needle. You don't want to use ballpoint needles for sewing regular cotton. But be a bit careful with your twin needles because they come in different sizes. And be very, very careful if you put a twin needle in, A, to make sure you've got it in properly, B, you threaded the machine up correctly, and C, should you choose to do any form of pattern or move the needle position, make sure you can actually run through the pattern. So just run the, turn the wheel a couple of times to make certain that you can actually clear the edges of the presser foot. Otherwise, there is a ghastly ping and the twin needle will break. Coping with needles isn't difficult. I'm afraid I have no allegiance to any particular make. I just buy needles. If I happen to see needles at a reasonable price, I buy them. Without doubt, titanium ones do seem to last a little longer. And certainly the slightly better quality ones last a little longer. They do pierce the fabric better. It's well worth changing your needles frequently. Uh, if you can possibly remember, mine tend to break if I'm doing a lot of machine embroidery, so they get changed then. Ideally, you should put a new needle in every eight to ten hours. Most of you won't remember. Um, I certainly don't always remember that. And of course, a new needle at the start of a project is really good. What do you do when you break a needle? Well, when you break a needle, I must confess, I find all the little bits. Frequently, you'll find that the little tiny weeny point has probably dropped inside the machine if that's where it's broken. Don't worry about it. As long as the machine works still and just turn the flywheel, it's not a problem. When it gets serviced, the service guy will take out those odd points down the bottom. I've never worried about them. But if I have got the point and the rest of the needle, I will wrap it up in something like a bit of masking tape because I don't want that point getting into the environment. And I'll put it in my sharps box, which every so often I take down to our local chemist, who's very happy to get rid of all my broken needles and bent pins. If I've taken a needle out for some reason that I don't actually want and I'm going to reuse again, then I will try to remember the packet I've got it out of. It's well worth keeping the packet beside the sewing machine. Write the number, the fact it's a metal one there and the fact it's 14 and it's a ballpoint, and perhaps put it into a little bit of calico or some spare fabric, which I then store in a tin. So if you've got broken needles, please, please, please be careful. Do not let those points and things get into the system. Storing them, you can put them into a bit of cloth. If you happen to have a packet that is left over or empty, you could always identify it and write old on it. So that's a little bit about needles. Needles are the, probably the most important thing. And if your machine is throwing a wobbly and it's clicking or it's clacking, change the needle. Nine times out of 10, you're going to be working with a universal. I probably usually have either a 70, which is the same as an 11, or I have an 80 and a 12 in my machine because I quite often work with through thick layers. So take care of your machine, give it a new needle, make sure you put the needle in properly. And when you have got an old needle, please dispose of it correctly. So to sum up, if I'm going to be doing any free motion quilting, then I will most certainly use a finer needle. 60, as I said, is recommended by Philippa Naylor, or I would use a 70. Should I be going to do some patchwork, then I would probably use a 70 or maybe an 80 if I was working through thicker fabric. So this is for sewing sort of regular cotton materials together, that type of weight of fabric. Uh, it is noted that Dawn Cameron Dick likes to use a Microtech one, which is a really nice sharp needle rather than a universal. 
Should you be sewing jean fabric together or anything thick, you need a thicker, heavier needle, so it'll be a higher number. I would mend my jeans using possibly a 14 or maybe a 16. That is a 90 or a 100. If you're going to be doing a lot of pounding through, perhaps various layers of thread where I have on this little dragon, then I would use probably a much thicker needle. I'd use a 14 because going through very thick layers of thread, you need to pierce the thread and the machine has to have a heavier weight needle to get through all those layers. And indeed, I might use a top stitch one because that would allow me to use a decorative thread as I've done on this particular panel. I did this bit of decoration on this cosmic happening design using a top stitch needle and the advantage of a top stitch needle is it has a bigger eye so I could put a slightly thicker thread in, so top stitch needles. And finally, any form of knit fabric you will absolutely need to use a ballpoint or stretch needle because otherwise a sharp will just snag the various fibres. And that's it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this short talk on how to select a needle, which one to have, and if you wait to the end of the screen, there is a neat page where you can photocopy it, sorry, photograph it with your phone and actually have a record of which needle is recommended. But just keep changing the needle and make sure you don't have one that's got a burr on the end.